Hello and you're very welcome to the Women's Rugby Pod. Berth and Sunter, Dame Sunter, are in the US. Big World Rugby Women's Shape of the Game conference going on this week. Hopefully catch up with him next week to hear all about that. So it's me all by myself. But there's a full preview of the Premier 15's final for you. We've got Poppy Leach who, if you know your onions, knows just how central she is to Exeter and has been from day one. The heartbeat of that side. Poppy Leach comes on and discusses all about the final last year, the motivation, where they find themselves, that game against Gloucester a few weeks ago, that semi-final as well. Fascinating chat with Poppy Leach. And then for Gloucester Heartbreak, Lady's just been a little bit on the edges. Kelly Smith being injured, but in and amongst this squad in the build-up to this final and a brilliant season for Gloucester Harbury. So right in the middle of both camps for the Prem 15 final. We'll have all the world news as well. Venues for the WXVs. We've got Sevens News, Team GB out in the European Games and Fiji naming their squad leading up to the WXV. All to come on the Women's Rugby Pod. Let's get straight into it then. The blue corner from the southwest. Less than 100 games in this league. Their fourth final, second consecutive league final. Exeter Chiefs, they've been there. How crucial, how helpful will that be going into the final this year? Lady who's been there from the very, very start has had some personal success according to the England squad this season. But she's utterly integral to everything down at Sandy Park. Here's Poppy Leach. It is a very, very good morning to Poppy Leach. Good morning to you, Poppy. How are you? Day yeah. ahead of the final. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, feels a bit surreal that the final's tomorrow. Um, but yeah, no, really good. Good good training session yesterday, good double day. Uh, so we're, we're ready for Saturday. What What's kind of been, been the approach since... Since the semi-finals, did did you have a, a few days off? Because obviously it's been a sort of two-week gap. Uh, yes, yeah, so we had um, so we played last on the Sunday for our semi. So we had Monday off. We kind of did a, a pretty relaxed session on Tuesday. Did a lift uh, Wednesday off as normal, and then kind of went back into things on Thursday. Really, so it's been it's been relatively standard. Um, but I think the the week in between was definitely needed. Um, gives gives us and, and Gloucester a little bit of extra time to prep, gives bodies an extra week to rest um, and obviously a little bit of time to build up in terms of the, the visibility of the game. Her ticket sales have gone through the roof already. Um, so, yeah, glad we had the week for many reasons, but looking forward to tomorrow. Body feels ready, team feels ready. So, And, and, and what, what's been the approach? Is it is it just another game or... Obviously, we got to this stage last year, and you know, I think it was a, a, a incredible success to to get to, to where you got to last year. But there would have been some disappointments. You, you know, you're professional athletes. Um, so, what's been the what been the, the sort of the angle this year? Is it come on? It's just eighty minutes. It's a it's a grass pitch. It's whatever. Or do you know what? This is the final. Let's let's really ramp it up. Um, I don't know. I think I was actually speaking to Susie last night about the final last year and we kind of felt like not that we fell into it but we almost our our semi-final was so massive against Bristol last year that it almost felt like our semi-final was our final and we went through um some of the comparisons to last year and this year with with Steve yesterday and I think actually our route till this point has been much better in that we've had to manage some really tough games um, and that includes tough losses, you know, Bristol away, Sarries away. Um, but then we built a little bit of momentum back. We had a game against Wasps at home and then we had a good result against Gloucester where we need, where you needed five points to get to a final. So whereas in comparison to last year, it was like riding high, big walkovers. Um, and then our only two challenges really were our Bristol semi-final and our last, uh, our round 10 fixture, which was um, our round 18 fixture, sorry, which was Bristol as well. So I feel like, Although maybe we, we were kind of on a more positive momentum route last year, we've actually had to kind of overcome 
peaks and falls this year, um, which I just think means that we're we're in the best emotional state going into the final. I think we 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 know it's one more game. We know the the intensity of the game. We know it's going to be a real challenge. We know the um, you know the size of the game with it being the final. But I just think the last kind of eight weeks has challenged us to it to it to the perfect degree that we know what mindset we need to be going into the final. So no one wants to lose games to Bristol and Zaris away. But I think it is what we needed to make sure when we get to those moments and we're challenged and we're essentially having to find ways to win games, we we feel that we can do that, um, which could well be the way that it is on on Saturday. So, yeah. There's so so much to, to pick up on there. The first thing I just wanted to just reflect just onto Gloucester just momentarily. But yeah. you said last year you, you played your final in the semi final. Yeah. I said I just got a sense at at now Queen's home. Yeah. Gloucester just so delighted at the semi final. Is is there there a hope um of them slipping slipping into it into that sort of phase like you did last year, you say? I don't know. I mean I've always said that the more finals you play and the better you get at winning them. Um, and I think that, I really do think that um, I've, you know, when I coach over at the university, that's kind of one of the big messages I, I say to our girls is the more finals you can get yourself in, the more likely you are going to be winning them. And you look at Saracens, they're actually, they're, you know, exactly that. Last year when we played them, I think there was a point to prove for them having lost the final the previous year to Quinn's. But they've played in so many finals across the years, um, the, more than any other club. It felt like last year they just knew how to emotionally manage the height of that game. Um, and they'd been there before. Um, and I think now we've played in two Prem Cup finals. Um, we've played in the final last year. So I just think it's the exposure to that that plays dividends. That's not me saying that Gloucester aren't going to will or won't be um, overwhelmed by the the, the the environment or the game or the, the nature of the game. I just think maybe we've fortunately gone through some of those finals in different environments before, which I just think is always going to benefit you. Um, it's not going to be the reason that you win or lose, um, but I think it helps. Um, and we learned a lot about the final last year, about the prep, about how to how to make sure we peak at the right time, how to look after people's bodies. Um, and a lot of the squad that's playing this weekend has played in that final last year. Um, not everybody, but some. Um, so I think that that also helps. I, I could not agree with you more. And I think that that, that mental side and well, have you, look at the, the Heineken Cup and actually, <clears throat> as you say, you, you, Champions Cup, whatever it's called nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to earn your stripes, and yeah. you know, uh, as you say, two cup finals and a and, and a final last last year. Yeah. Um, do you do you think that gives you the, the the mental edge, despite playing at their place? Um, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't know about the mental edge. I think I don't know. Gosh, it's hard to say because I just think like finals are those games where you know it's. It really is who turns up on the day. Um, maybe, yes, yeah, slightly. Maybe a slight advantage of the mental edge. But then I suppose, you know, people could argue they're playing at home. They, they've probably got that that advantage uh, compared to us. They've got travelling. Uh, they've got kind of home supporters. That's, uh, you know, an advantage to them. Um, but I think it's going to be a cracking game. I, I think it is the two best teams in the final, 100%. I think it's the two teams that have shown this year um, the most consistency across the league. Um, and it is really great to have two different names in the final, not having London clubs. We need to show every season that we push through that the competitive nature across the league is expanding and that it's not just Harlequins and London uh, and Saracens in the final every single year. Um, so that's that's why I'm best pleased about it to be playing Gloucester, just to be playing different people. Um you know, we've shown this year that it's not just about the top two in the league where it has been previously. If you think back to the first year of Allianz, it was Harlequins and Saris that kind of stormed ahead of everybody else. And then it was the fight for three and four, um, which was similar this year. But it's just nice to see a reshuffle of where teams have landed in the league. Um, so I'm glad it's that's my main reason. I'm glad it's someone else is that we, we've shown this year that as 
teams that have maybe not found themselves in top two historically have found themselves in a final and a different name gets to go on the trophy. Um, obviously, I'm hoping it's us. Um, but yeah, that's that's what pleases me the most is that we're moving in the right direction for the competitive nature across the league, which is ultimately what gets people to watch it. You know, we want each team to feel like they're building a home base of fans because they're playing competitive rugby. And I think every year we're doing that, which is amazing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I'm going to get into sort of X in the psyche in a moment or two. Um, you speak quite superbly as an ambassador for, for the game and for the league. Sign her up, somebody. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. No, but I, I couldn't agree with you with you more. Top two, when you have this playoff, it's about you know how consistently you perform, isn't it? Um, yeah. And yet we have these playoffs and, yeah. It is what it is, but yeah, I'm always pleased to see the top two, two, two in there. Um, as last year's final and and the motivation of of falling short that day or not quite being being a, a where Saracens were, has, has that been been you spoken about at all this week? Um, a little bit. I think well, we kind of touched on it yesterday in our in our final team meeting. Just that what we've learned from last year and what we've learned across the season this year has put us in a better position to win the final. Um, and part of that being having lost the final last year. So, yeah, I don't know. I think the the final last year feels like a million years ago now, for some reason, the season. Well, I mean, the seasons are becoming longer and longer each year as well. 11 month season or whatever, whatever month we're in now. Um, but I think the focus has been very much so on, on the here and now um and the work that we've put in this season but there's always uh we always take ourselves back to last year's final to remind us how how it did feel to fall short it's good to pull on those emotional strings of players at times um to make sure we're in the right mindset but i think the focus is on on the here and now um we probably won't speak about last year's final um leading up to the game um but yeah that was a odd game last year (laughs) we were so bad (laughs) Um, but we won't be bad tomorrow and that's all that matters. Um, and I'm still glad that we, to some degree, lost the final last year because I just think it's it's the learning that we needed to make ourselves better come, coming into it this year. So, Yeah, it's another, another r- ring in the, in the trunk, isn't it? It's another, yeah. another experience that, that, that you can use um, as players and as coaches. Um, you've had some, some decent battles against Glossy. Your latest one, you, you needed five points, but I think it's fair to say that... Um, they didn't go full metal jacket in, no. in in that game. What do you take from from those those games against Gloucester? Their defence is, is is right up there. Mm-hmm. Um, is is one of the keys to the breakdown and, and and stopping their quick ball? Yeah, well, I think what's funny is actually that the DNA of how we play is very similar to the DNA of how Gloucester play: um, game line collision, speed of ball. Um, I would say we're probably a little bit more multi-phase than than Gloucester. Um, yeah. I think we like to play with the ball in hand a little bit more. So I think whereas Gloucester, have, you know, the way that Clikey plays is in their DNA, the, the boot that she has. So I think they kind of find themselves playing in different areas of the park more so. Um, but I would say the breakdown in the game now is is always part of how you win a fixture. Um, it's all about the speed of ball, how quickly teams can play. And Gloucester have got a, an impeccable defensive outfit, um, huge double person collisions, really good line speed, really good ability to, to double D and defend the outside channels. But I would say that felt a little bit like us last year, um, is that all people spoke about was how we defend. We had the best defensive um, record in the league. Um, and... Actually, I think what we forgot about last year was how important it is to also be able to attack. And it you could always say that, can't you? you? I mean, if you can attack really well but you can't defend, then you're gonna then you're gonna find yourself having points scored against you. If you can attack, but uh, if you can defend, sorry, but you haven't got the ability to build your attacking phases, then you're never gonna score any tries. So I think this year we tried to really get the balance of both. So we've had very few points scored against us still. Um we're scoring a lot of points more than any other team by quite a, by quite a stretch. Um, so 100% when you look at Gloucester's defence, and that's been a big part of our, our prep in the last couple of weeks, is 
and in the last round is how do we find space? How do we find ways of exploiting them defensively? Um, but yeah, ret retaining ball is a big part of that. So breakdown skills, speed to clear out, work on the floor. Um, you know, that's a big part of the way that we play. But yeah, I think we love to attack. We love to build phases. We love to to put teams under pressure by playing 15 plus phases if we need to. And that's when you really challenge what a team's defence is like. Um, you know, last year we defended 28 phases in the Bristol semi-final to end up closing the game out and winning. Uh, we did a similar number of defending uh, defence phases in, in the Saris game at home this year as well. So we, we can, we're still very much a, a strong defensive outfit. Um, I just think this year we focused on our attack and that's shown through with the amount of tries that we're scoring. Um, but yeah, the, the breakdown will always be a big part of the game for, for ourselves as players, but also for the officials. There's a big pressure on them to referee the breakdown so they can keep the game flowing. So that means you also get less opportunity to get at the ball because they want they want the team attacking to stay with possession, really. Um, so, yeah, great defence. We've got great attack. So we'll see. We will indeed, you know. It's been a it's a, been a real treat, as you say, to to see that the layering on that, to, that that you've done this year. There's so much to ask you about, but I, I must I must ask you about the second row battle because that it, it, it's it's going to be fierce. Um, yeah. For those just listening, um, there was a big big smile that just came across Poppy's face as I mentioned the second row battle. You're quite cl clearly <laughs> relishing going up against Sam Sam Monahan and uh, and Zoe Allcroft. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I just kind of like found myself playing second row. So, <laughs> so it just felt like it was like, where should we put her? <laughs> Which is fine. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to interrupt you and disagree. They had to find a spot for you on the field. I think that's more the point. Well, Susie just has to have you on the field. Facts. Well, maybe. Carry on. Maybe. Yeah, carry, on. Um, carry on. Yeah, I think uh, I feel really fortunate to play uh, alongside Nick. Nick Friday, um, we've, we've probably second row together uh, as a partnership the most in the league this year for Chiefs. I'm also really fortunate to have been in there with Abby Fleming, who, who's had an absolutely fantastic Six Nations campaign for Wales. And also Linda van der Velven, who is, is a club member through and through and kind of epitomises what we want to be at Chiefs, both on and off the pitch. Um, but me and Nick have probably found ourselves there together the most. Um, I feel like I've learned a huge amount from her about more than just how you second row, <laughs> um, but about um, how to get the best out of people, how to lead quietly and loudly, um, how to help, how to ask people for help sometimes, which is hard when you feel like you've always got to be a, a strong leader. I think she gets that balance really, um, gets that balance right. Um, and also, you know, Nick came over from Ireland wanting to play competitive rugby, wanting to better herself as an athlete and as a rugby player. And she's had the best season that she's had by a mile this year. The way that she led Ireland through a really difficult Six Nations campaign has inspired a lot of us over at Chiefs. Um, and the way that she plays for us, the way that she she gets us over the game line, um, the way that she defends, you know, she's one of the most aggressive chop, chop tacklers we've got in our in our 15 um, is an accolade to her. So, yeah, I love being in the second row. I feel very fortunate to second row with her um, and many other people that I've I've been able to this season. But it's it's definitely an engine room. <laughs> you definitely have to put your head in awful places in the scrum, and you have to hope that you're going forwards because if you're going backwards, then it's the worst thing in the world being in there. We experienced that. Sorry's away. I got a real lesson in how to to go backwards in a scrum um but thankfully i feel like we've, we've done a lot of problem solving we've moved, moved in the right direction our, our scrum is back to being a threat for us which is great um and i just do the me and nick or whoever's in the second row just do the pushing work for the front row to look great so if the scrum goes really well it's the front row if the scrum doesn't go really well it's apparently the second row's fault so just we're used to that being the case now um but you know zoe and sam two fantastic players um both instrumental in set piece but also in open play um so yeah it's going to be a great game um and it's going to be a great battle i'm sure against the four of us especially in and around the line out i think that's a big attacking platform for both teams um so yeah we'll, we'll, i'll be interested to see how the line out goes this weekend um but i'm looking forward to it yeah 100 percent 
true leader, ladies and gentlemen, deflecting, talking about other people <laughs> and, and and not herself. No, no, no. It's uh, Sarah Hunter does exactly the same. Uh, you're in, you're in very very good company. Um, I, I just wanted to 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 get to you and fortunate enough to to speak to Susie. Um, Reasonably regularly, and and had a chat with Steve, whatever earlier on this season. I, I I can't quite believe where you've got to in in such a short space of time. Yeah, uh, I, and I don't mean that just on the field, but but as a group. And I'm not saying for one moment that the other teams in the league don't have what you have, but but your team spirit and the way you come back from fourteen nil down, your accuracy, composure. From that kickoff, even the second half, and you you go down and, and you and you oh, score. <laughs> that that takes in, incredible trust within yeah. each other. Where does that come from? What what does it mean to be a chief? You spoke about Linda there, um, who yeah. exemplifies being a chief on and off the field. What does it mean to be a chief to to you, Poppy? Um, that's a good question. I think. I do try. I think what I think what has shaped us over the last three years is I remember the first year and it was obviously the COVID year. And because of COVID and because we share quite a small club with the men, we had to like really overcome some really challenging moments where you find it really hard to be a female athlete. Um and that's not me putting against the men. That, that was the reality of a pandemic. You know, um, we were given quite a small space. Um, it was actually one of the out kind of outdoor bar areas. It's called the Undercroft to us um, that we had to use as a training room and a gym and a changing room and a meeting room and everything. And I remember we'd be, you know, in November, it would be freezing outside. Susie had found us these like small heaters that we could like put inside the Undercroft bar to keep us warm. And we'd have like, I remember sitting there, Emily Tatosi would genuinely have socks, trackies, gloves, scarf, beanie, uh, like, you know, one of those- uh, Snoop things. things. Yeah. And she'd be, sh I mean, she's always cold. So that's like also typical, but would be shivering. Um, and we'd be like eating our food because we got we get fed by the by the club, which is great and makes a big difference for um, kind of being full time over there. I suppose so we'd be eating, we'd be freezing, and then you know you transition into summer and the undercroft isn't so bad and you know it's it's not Baltic and you're not having to use your heaters. But I think in that year, we learned so much about how fortunate we are to be even with all of those parts, even with being in the undercroft, even with freezing cold in November, I think every single person felt so, so grateful to be part of something new and building history. And Susie has always spoken about that from day dot, about building our own history and that we can, we can pave our way however we want to do that. And we can, we kind of, we had the opportunity to completely reinvent what extra Chiefs women could be because we'd never been a team before. We were starting from scratch. So in that year, we had we had to overcome a huge amount of the adversity in our own right. Um, and when you look at the squad that's there now, a huge amount of the numbers, uh, a huge amount of the people playing in the weekend on Saturday went through that first year because a lot of our players have stayed around. We've got, you know, decent player retention. So there's like a core group of us that went through that first year so now every single day that we go to the club, you know, we're not in the Undercroft anymore, obviously, because um, COVID is thankfully much, much um, safer. Um, we just every day appreciate being there and being a female athlete in this amazing world of rugby that's growing at an obscenely fast rate and that we're part of it. And yes, we had to go through being in the Undercroft and all of that stuff, but now you know, we feel very much at home at Sandy Park. And when you've got 4,000 people turn out to watch a home semi-final against Saris, it makes every day that you were in the Undercroft or every day that felt difficult so, so worth it. So I think that's just an element of like, a like 
humbleness about the squad that actually we're really fortunate to be in the position that we're in. We've got players that have come over from USA, Canada that have left their partners or left their jobs and barely any money, uh, despite what people probably think, but to earn barely any money to be part of the club um, because I feel like we've made Sandy Park our home now. So I think that's a big part of that, having gone through a tough couple of years with the pandemic and being a brand new side and welcoming loads of different people across the world into the club and having to get to know each other really fast. I remember people would join and they'd have from other countries and they'd have no idea what the premiership was like. And they'd play two games and they'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> these are some of the hardest games I've ever played. And at that point, the premiership then compared to where it is now was even worlds apart. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a rubbish answer. Essentially, I think it's a core, core group of people that have remained over three years really finding our feet in the club and building a fan base and building a home and then ultimately welcoming new people into that every year with open arms and supporting them in understanding what we're about and how we are about pushing for more in everything that we do, pushing to get more opportunity, more visibility, more support, more resources, but also in that having a real strength of grace and humbleness about what we get because... If you look at the, the Wasps this year, you know, we drew to Wasps last year, 15 all, a great club playing absolutely fantastic rugby with players that have gone on to play international across the world who then all overnight, bam, the club's gone. You know, we, we're very fortunate to be in a club that's financially stable that allows us to open the doors to 4,000 people and play great rugby, but also have people come over from over overseas and be part of this amazing club so I just think it's important where women's rugby is at right now is to push the boundaries in everything that we do push for more support like I said earlier more resources more visibility but also go bloody hell we're in a really good spot compared to where we were three years ago and that is down to people like Susie being an advocate for the game and everything they do people like yourself people like Nick Heath People like, you know, everybody that's part of the game constantly having to sell it. The players having to sell it everywhere you go. Convince people, come and watch our sport, come and watch our game. It's the best thing out there. So it's important to get that balance right, you know, to say we need more. We want more. We are worthy of more. But also we are really humbled by what we've got right now um, because every year it gets better. Every year that we're not in the undercroft is better. <laughs> every year that we get, you know more flat fans through the door is great all of that stuff sorry it's a bit of a whirlwind answer but that's a difficult question felt like you put me on the spot there in that moment. i should have prepared for that question um this is episode 154 of the regular sort of weekly podcast it's one of the best answers i've had oh god uh, i thought that was a rubbish answer <laughs> sorry. no no no, no. Well, i'm glad you genuinely glad you like answer. no no genuinely um I, I don't think you could have summed up where Clubs in the in the and players are in the in the Premier Fifteens better the, than you have, but also an insight into to Exeter and and the history you feel and and that being the sort of foundation of the family. Um, no, absolutely brilliant, and I'm really really conscious, Poppy, that it, you know it is the day before the game, um, and we've fine, we've worry. taken up loads of your your time. Um, we we will leave it there um, on that brilliant brilliant answer. It's been smashing speaking to you. Really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, commentated Thank on you, you quite a bit um, over the years, but uh, really, really nice to, to chat to you. And I'm glad, personally, it's gone really well for you this season. And you. have one last hurrah and, and enjoy every second, won't you? I definitely will. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> I'm Mohan, and you're listening to the Women's Rugby Pod. In South America, Brazil have won the South American Sevens Championship once again. In fact, they haven't lost a match, let alone a tournament that they have entered since 2004. The upshot being that they have qualified for the Paris Olympics in 2024. Congratulations, Brazil. Well, the Brazil 15-a-side team lost against Colombia 18-15. This was despite Colombia being down to 14 players just 22 minutes in. These two will do battle for qualifications to WXV in two matches on the 5th and 9th of July in Medellin, Colombia. In other Sevens news, the 2023 European Games will take place this weekend in Krakow. Big shout out to Abby Brown, one of the flag bearers for 
the Great Britain team. That seven-a-side team will play Norway, Romania and Italy in the pool stages, hoping to get qualification for Paris Olympics 2024. More than 100 players have been named in Fiji's wider group, which also contains 30 high-performance girls as part of the team preparing for their two tests against Japan in September, a match against the Blackfern A, and then off to WXV3. This is off the back of reports that the uni had not paid the players what they were due. It was revealed by Captain Seremia Liakua on social media. We are led to believe money has been handed over, but allegedly at a reduced rate. Ukraine have won the Rugby Europe Sevens first leg, beating Turkey 17-5 in the final after a year's absence. In 2021, Ukraine won the European Trophy, which gave them automatic promotion to the championship, but for uh, very obvious reasons, unable to take that place last year. Second leg next month of these European Sevens, but hard to see who can stop Ukraine winning promotion based on the weekend's performance. That second place is a far more open race. Venues have been set for WXV to be held in New Zealand between the 20th of October and the 4th of November. Wellington Sky Stadium is where it all kicks off on the 20th to the 21st of October. Forsyth Bar Stadium, great stadium down in Dunedin, hosts round two on the 27th and 28th. And then Auckland to the Go Media Stadium on the 3rd and 4th of November. WXV3 will be held in Dubai. It's also been announced. World Rugby... Going to Dubai, um, fairly obvious reasons, all purpose built over there. I think they get some, some good deals on hotels and that kind of stuff. It's a shame these home unions aren't putting up their hands to, to host these tournaments. Very short notice, I totally understand that. And of course, it is expensive. But um, you take, for example, someone like Ireland, you know, WXV3 to get them in front of their home fans and, and presumably winning a couple of games you'd think would be a, a very good move. Anyway, Dubai for WXV3, South Africa WXV2 and New Zealand for WXV1. Well, let's get into the red corner now. Deep in the shire, Queensholm is born. League toppers, but it is their first ever final. We're going to get a really unique perspective now of Gloucester Heartbreak. With a lady, sadly, has been on the sidelines for a long time now with a serious knee injury. Kelly Smith, the prestigious winger, scores tries for fun. She's just been on the outskirts and just really wanted to get into the conversation with her. Why Gloucester are that much better this season? Why the, the circus is finding some consistency? The the main people, the, the main tactics that are going to win the day in the final and... New man at the head of the top of uh, Gloucester Hartbury as well. We'll discuss it all with Kelly Smith. It is a very big hello, a big warm WRP welcome to Kelly Smith. Gloucester Hartbury legend, I would say. Um, six years of the, of the club now, which is the, the reason we're having a chat with you. i just come back from injury. Where are you at with everything at the moment, Kelly? Hello. Um, yeah, I'm just coming back from injury. So I had like an ACL operation about a year ago, um, but then I had to have like a second up. So um, just coming back from that. Um, it's been a long journey, but we're, we're getting there. We can see light at the end of the tunnel, I think, which is good. I'm just waiting on um, a hamstring score. I need my hamstrings to be better. <laughs> yeah, don't we all have that problem? We do, yeah. Oh, my hamstring scores, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> terrible look let's um let's get into it oh, I'm, I'm glad I, yeah i'm yeah i've uh, done both my acls and i know exactly where you're at um yeah i wish you all the best for uh for coming back from that but look gloucester it, it's a, it's been a, it's been a brilliant season hasn't it and now they're finally at, at the big dance there's a there's a lot of noise what's the what's the atmosphere around queen's home this week it's good isn't it like i think you know, like having that really good, really I think good. Amazing. I think having Gloucester community get behind us and you know, um, want to support us, which I wouldn't think anything less that they'd want to do that because obviously it's a massive uh, rugby city. Um, and I think just having those small little things happen, you know, having the having this uh, 
the stadium renamed as Queen's Home, I think is I think is very fitting. I think we've got a whole a whole team of Queens. So I think it's just amazing. Like I like when when I first saw that and I think when the girls first saw it, it was just like wow, like it's just amazing. I think obviously it is it is King's home, but I think like I've said, it's just that like little touch of just yeah, like really supporting us and just wanting us to like have that feel of just energy and bringing that, bringing that. So yeah, I think Queen's Home is very fitting. And yeah, to be fair, it's a whole whole team of queens. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a circus of, of queens. Have you noticed, Kelly, um, over the last couple of years, probably 18 months, um, and uh, I deliberately mentioned that that James Forrester is the new CEO of Gloucester Heartbreak. He, he's he's thoroughly thoroughly involved involved now. Have you got that sense of the club just beginning to just pull you in under the wing even more? Uh, and this kind of final represents that. Yeah, I think there's something special. Like I think it's been brewing for a while, but I think it, you can almost feel that like next level of just professionalism. I think the girls are feeling it as well. Of just you know having that support in and around the pitch on training in games but actually that off-field stuff of like you know including including everyone into the squad of, of how are we going to support these girls off the pitch um in every aspect of their life like in some like still have jobs but it's kind of like how are we gonna mold these girls schedules to fit around girls that are still working and still getting the best performance out with them onto the field in training and then you know like in training and being able to reach finals reach semi-finals so I think you know this season speaks for itself of how the level has gone up in that professionalism because we've reached the final and that can only be proved in our in our training and you know in our games and how we've performed. What's it like being part of the circus what 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 role do you do you play you what one of the clowns uh ringmaster one of the performing animals i can't say i can't say sorry well do you know what we all play a part don't we but i think obviously we've got some some more characters than others um but what i what i wouldn't say is what how how are we how are we circus players i'm not going to say that <laughs> understood understood fair enough but what the more I was getting at was what what's it like to 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 be a part of that, and I, I appreciate the like whatever you've been 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 looking on, um, but it seems like a really really fun invested place to play rugby from the outside. Is that true on the inside? Yeah, I think that's why we're called the circus. I think that's where it stemmed from. Is just that fun environment, like where. What you go to training and everyone's just laughing like everyone's having a good time I mean yeah like I think <laughs> I think we've just all got our own personalities our own characters and I think that's why we all come together and we really like just click um so yeah I think you go to training it's that environment where it just lifts you up you could have had a bad day or I don't know a bad training session it doesn't re- it doesn't really matter because you go into the gym Mo puts the tunes on we just dance around the gym obviously lifting heavy weights as well obviously and yeah it's just it's really good place to be so (laughs) um and if anybody else went to do the tunes would there be would there there be a ruckus well yeah i was on tunes last night and mo walked in saying can i go on tunes i was like okay (laughs) doesn't sound like myrtle really (laughs) what's what's sean lynn like um yeah we had him on um ahead of the semi-finals he's Quite quite a reserved chap, um, a little bit more open sort of when you're face to face with him, when there's no sort of cameras and microphones around. But um, I've never heard a, a Gloucester Harpy player say anything ill of him at all. What's he like as a as a boss? Yeah, he's a legend, really, isn't he? He um, he's a really good like coach to have, and think I think the most important part that he plays is just being able to. Like have conversations with us, not just about rugby as well. Like I, I, I often go up to him, like whilst the girls are doing little bits, and I'm just have a, a personal conversation with him. He's like, "What's going on?" And it's just, yeah, really personable, I think. And he comes into the gym every now and then and sees what we're up to. So I think, yeah, he's a good, he's a good egg. He's a good, good person to obviously have around the club, and he's led us to where we are now. So it's good. 
Yeah. People, people first, players second. What was the most impressive part of the semi-final win against Bristol for you, Kelly? Maybe back at the end, the celebration. <laughs> I was trying to get into sort of slightly more technical about the game, but no, I, I, I'm with you. I think the build up to it, like we, I think every single player in that changing room before, you could just tell like the focus, the determination on their faces of just this is the job we need to get done and we are doing it. There's no other answer. Like we are going to go out there and we are going to get that, that win. And I just never, ever had any doubt that that was going to happen. I think leading up to it as well, the training sessions, the, cl the clarity, um, just the overall smoothness of how everything went leading up to it. Everyone was on the same page and everyone knew their job. And I think Linny had a very good speech in beforehand about being warriors and just having each other's back and just being able to know what that next job mentality is. And I think that's what we did. We went out there and we were warriors. We just knew that next job mentality. Okay, that, that's been done, now what kind of thing. And I just think even when our backs were against the wall at points, we just knew how to how to react and how to, and how to essentially win. And I think that that was the most impressive thing for me. I just ne never had any doubt that that was gonna be, that was gonna be the result. Who's gonna win this weekend then? Gloucester. And do you have the same, you're talking very, very clearly and very passionately about, about that lead up to that semi-final. Do you have the same kind of feelings this week leading into to, to the final tomorrow? I think energy is bubbling really nicely. I think being around in camp, you can just tell like exactly what I've just said. Exactly the same as the semi-final. The girls are just focused. Um, clarity yeah. and just, yeah, I think it's been, it's been impressive. What what have been the, the the main focuses this week when you're up against a an extra side? Uh, impressive, weren't they? In the semi final, fourteen nil down to come back and uh, and snatch it, and then to go behind again. Um, what have been the key key battle areas that, that Linny's been focusing on this week with the with the squad? I think it's the same, similar to the, the semi final. I think that, like having that attitude of. It might not go our way all the time, and it won't. But it's about how we are going to, how are we going to react, and how are we going to pull together as a team and think, right, okay, how are we going to, how are we going to end up with points? And I think, again, that 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 mentality of okay, next job, and just keep keeping the fight. In previous seasons, yeah, especially yeah, they're like assassins, run them really, really close. But consistency, I know, and I've spoken to, to several players about consistency over the last couple of years. You, you won the league this year, not that it means a, a great deal, but you topped the table for the regular season, should we say. Why the consistency this year, Kelly? I think, I think a lot of it comes from... Because it, it feels, it, this year feels feels different. Um, and, and, and I, I want to get down to uh, as as to why i think we've always said haven't we like in well it's, it's everyone's it's all teams goal is to finish top four get into get into the playoffs but i think with gloucester i think there's just been some yeah there has been something different i think it's that like i said at the very start of the conversation the professionalism and like where do we actually want to go like where do we where do we see ourselves and we've always always said like we're going to win the plan this year and i think it's, it's the belief more than anything of actually, okay, we are going to do it. We are we are very good enough to be able to do it. I think obviously we've had, you know, a, a team shuffle around. We've had new players come in and I think they've just smoothly come in to the, to, to the team and, you know, like added that value, added that professionalism. And it's just, like I said, it's the work that's being done off the pitch as well. The values, the culture and everyone being on the same page of this is where we are going with it this is what we want to achieve and how do we do that and I think being put into place of how we do that is is essentially how we've achieved to be getting where we are um because we've all know, we all know what it was that we wanted to achieve so we've done it wow powerful stuff and and then just to just to sort of polish the halos even even more, 
it, it's announced yesterday that um, the match fees are going to go to to Ed Slater's um, fund. Uh, a wonderfully selfless act, uh, and and speaks volumes uh, about about you as a group. How did that come about? Yeah, well, it's just obviously amazing fun to to donate to, and I think you know, like it's it's more about it's more than rugby, isn't it? So it's just being able to how how can we how can we contribute as a team? And I think the group of players that we've got, we are uh, uh, the girls are just the most caring caring players that I've and friends that I've ever come across. So I just there was no doubt that as soon as you know that message was put in, absolutely everyone bought in, and we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to donate to any other any other thing. So. It is caring, a caring squad, very admirable. Is it enough to, to win a Prim 15s final over 18 minutes yeah. against Exeter, who are what hurting I love from last year's defeat? Yeah, I think that's what I love about this team is, you know, like these girls are, they have like the biggest hearts, like they are the most caring, friendliest team. And, you know, they've all got each other's backs. But then when you go on the field, I'm, I'm genuinely scared of them. <laughs> like they are, they... They are unbelievable rugby players as well. And I just, to be honest, I was, I was driving to work today and I thought, you know what, these girls are like role models, inspiration. So I just, I'm just so excited. I can't wait. It's going to be good. Yeah, it, 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 it certainly is. One last question. Who, who's going to be the key protagonist in, in this game, Kelly? Where, where, what players do you need to play well to get over the line? I mean, quite a cliche answer, isn't it? Like, obviously, we want every single one of those players on the team on. I think we just need the best performances from everyone. But like, we need that front foot ball. We need we need our our backs to have ball in hand, and we need them to have that go forward. So I think, you know, like having our pack on fire, getting the likes of Zoe, Elcroft, Beckett carrying that front foot front foot ball, and then we can we can play and score tries. Hopefully, I mean you quite used to it now but what are you going to be like as a watcher tomorrow what what length are your nails not right now they're not really, you can't bite those no genuinely what what are you like as a as a watcher where, where, where are you going to be no i'm just i'm thinking about this like in the semis i was so nervous i kept, i went home and i was exhausted like i'd actually played myself <laughs> <laughs> watching I'm sure I'm sure it's worth watching but I think I think what I'm gonna do is take myself off and maybe just chill and yeah maybe just have a little drink there's an idea very nice yeah or or, or two or three um absolutely brilliant and outside of the the the, the result on the field it, it's going to be a huge successful day not only for for Gloucester Harbury, effectively they're just a, just a host, aren't they? For, for the RFU, but it it promises to be record ticket sales for final. Blah, blah, blah. It just promises to be yet another record day for women's rugby in this country. It's great to be a part of, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, I think yeah, like and especially being out of the game for a little bit with the injury. I think it's been amazing to be able to actually have that step back and watch it grow. I think it's just unbelievable, like how many people now are just so invested in the game and just you know it's not even like women's rugby anymore it's just, it's just I'm going to go and watch the game and no one questions you know if it's the men playing or the women and I just and I, I don't even think it's a question anymore it's just you know it's part of people's weekends and I think that's amazing and that's what the girls have done it's only the girls that have gone out and, and done those performances and played those performances that have you know attracted the crowd so it can only get better yeah, I couldn't agree more. And are we hoping to see you back next season? Yeah, I'll be back next season. Awesome. We yeah, we we miss you running in those those tries for fun, Kelly. Thank you. I know you you're at work and you just squeezed us uh, us in this morning, and I really really appreciate it. Um, enjoy. Don't have too many drinks, will you? Um, and perhaps um, I might find you at some point and, and have a drink with you. But um, no, really, really great to to have you on this morning, and uh, we'll, we will see you tomorrow and enjoy enjoy the final. Thank you. I'm Katie Dealey McLean, and you're listening to the Women's Rugby Podcast. I mean, it's going to be a fascinating game, as Poppy alluded to. Teams that play very similar styles going to be very, very physical on that game line. The 
the battle for the ball, of course, the physicality, who wins those collisions will be absolutely crucial. As everyone, if you listen to this pod, you, you know how important I find the, the mental side of the of the game. And I just think Exeter, having been there last year, I've had some, some ups and downs and last year was great fun and a great achievement to get to the final this year. Some some as I say, some some tough games. I just think they will have the edge over Gloucester Heartbreak, who, you know, brilliant as a club, have reacted superbly this week, hosting it, Queen's home and wages to the Ad Slater Foundation and, and clearly going in, in the right direction and, and league toppers virtually the entirety of the of the season. But I just just wonder whether a final was played couple of weeks early but we shall see wish all the players management supporters and everyone involved in the two clubs a great great day that's about it for this week full preview of that final for you we're going to do our final whistle pod Berth and I at Queen's Arm will be there we'll be trying to drag in players and coaches as they pass us um, in the media mix zone there but it's a big, big thank you to Kelly Smith, to Poppy Leach, to Tom and Vicky in the background, to you for listening. If you're not at Queen's Home tomorrow, Saturday, then do pop it on the television, BT Sport for that one. Get your best coverage. Enjoy. Enjoy.